Mark, walk us through uh, why you think a dollar is topping out. Yeah, so I'd, I'd begin with thinking, uh, as, your, as your previous guest was talking about as well, that, that the market is now looking at a terminal Fed funds rate of 5%. In order for us to get more bang out of that, I think the market needs greater guidance from the Federal Reserve. And yet, over the weekend, the most hawkish member, the most hawkish voting member of the FOMC, the St. Louis Fed President Bullard, refrained from even committing to 75 basis points in December, which the market has just about all priced in. So I'm thinking the Fed uh, peak around 5% in Q1 next year. An important thing I think that also your, your guest uh, hinted at and that is that the markets are, are a big anticipatory, they're a discounting mechanism. And so that means is we should expect the dollar to bottom, excuse me, the dollar to top out before the Fed gets done. We're gonna be anticipating it. And I think that's what's beginning to happen. Now that, we've, now that we've got the strong jobs data, the strong CPI, the reasonably strong retail sales behind us, the market can focus on other things. And as early as next week, we're looking at a 75 basis point hike from the Bank of Canada and from the ECB. And so I think that uh, first, I think that uh, the, the terminal rate of Fed funds is the key here. Secondly, I think that everybody's positioned the other way. Everybody I want to say in the sister have been uh, bullish a dollar with good reason. And I think uh, we're just beginning to see signs of that cracking. And the third yeah. thing I'd point out is that the US economy, we're going to get the GDP number next week for Q3. It'll be a payback for the contraction in Q1 and Q2. But this is it. I think that most yeah. people are now looking for a recession sometime in the first part of next year. Uh -oh. Okay, so just to make sure I'm hearing you right, uh, Mark, you're saying the dollar is in the process of topping as we speak, and you mentioned the five handle on uh, the terminal rate, and th that's kind of an extraordinary thing to think about, right? Uh, implied terminal rate, 5%, and you're saying dollar obviously front runs out or discounts it. Uh, so where does that leave Fed sequencing then? Uh, in a couple of weeks, uh, first week of November, in fact, 75. December, say, they eased it to 50. What happens after that? Do they just stay at pause? Oh, yeah. Do they hit so, the pause button? Yeah, no, I think that, look, look what happened. We had uh, that CPI number above 8% and a new cyclical high in the core rate. The Fed cannot, I mean, because the Fed was late at the get to game, that is to say that they were slow to begin tightening to take away some of that stimulus. I think that they have to err now. They can't be bitten by that same dog twice. They've got to err on the hawkish side and these Fed critics out there like Lawrence Summers pushing them to a more hawkish direction for their credibility. So I, what I'd imagine is 75 basis points in November, 75 in December, and then cutting back in Q1 to 50 basis points. I think that uh, we get that terminal rate of Fed funds and then we get this, uh, I'd say, a pregnant pause because by that time, I think that inflation is going to be coming down. Here's why. In Q1, if you annualize Q1 CPI, 10%. Annualized Q2 CPI, another 10%. If you annualize Q3 CPI, it's a little bit more than 1%. So I think that by uh, in the first half of next year, we're going to see a big drop in CPI, and that'll help take the pressure off the Federal Reserve.